Let's get to some bonding questions here. Question one, how many pairs of electrons are shared between nitrogen atoms in one molecule? Well, nitrogen, if you recall, has three bonds. I'm actually drawing the dot diagram because nitrogen is in group 15 on the periodic table. It has five valence electrons. It needs the share in order to get to the magic number of eight. So the pairs of electrons that are shared are going to be three. Let's move on to the next. A molecule must be nonpolar if the molecule, when you go through the choices, what you're looking for is a snap. In other words, this can be used to remember that symmetrical for nonpolar, asymmetric for polar. So sure enough, nonpolar, symmetrical, and there it is in choice four. Now, I didn't number these so great when I cut and paste, and literally, you can tell from the lines, I, I cut and paste physically these questions. I also apologize. The resolution isn't the greatest either, but work on questions, check the answers, and just keep improving. That's what you need to do to get the best grade you can on the Regents exam. So before I go any further, let's look at questions eight and then question nine. So question eight, it's asking the number of electrons shared between atoms in I2. So iodine is part of group 17. All group 17 elements are known as the halogens. They all have seven valence electrons. When they bond with themselves, they share a pair of electrons, right? So one pair, but the number of electrons shared is two. Now, the correct dot diagram for iodine as a molecule, we show the line as, as a pair being shared, but don't forget, and these dots are really tiny, but don't forget the rest of the valence electrons for I2. Okay, let's take a look at number nine. Which substance has nonpolar covalent bonds? Nonpolar covalent bonds, nonpolar molecules are all of your diatomics. If you know that going in, that's very important that you know that fact. I'll say it again. Your diatomic molecules, which most teachers will say Hofbrinkle, so that you remember all seven of them, all have nonpolar covalent bonds and are also nonpolar molecules. So the answer there is choice one. All right, let's go to three. Well, it's actually question three and four. This, I just made a mistake when I numbered it. So I'm not the greatest cut and paster and I'm not the greatest numberer. But it's asking about what's going to represent a sample of silver. Well, any s silver or anything else on the left-hand side of the periodic table, of course, is a metal. And what do we have with metals? We have moving electrons. And, of course, silver, again, is a metal anyway, which I don't know if you really needed the picture to pick out that it's metallic bonding. All right, let's go over to the other side here in question 10. We're looking for the explanation for, again, a nonpolar molecule. So this was bonding questions from the 2017 Regents exams, and we were three for three right now as far as asking about something with nonpolar. So why is this molecule nonpolar? Remember, it's a snap. So we're going to have a distribution of charge that is symmetrical, which is choice three. So let's just recap very quickly. Don't forget, it's a snap, symmetrical, nonpolar, asymmetric, polar. Don't forget, your diatomic molecules are nonpolar bonds, nonpolar molecules. Of course, you know silver is a metal, so you're talking metallic bonding. And remember, just make sure you're answering if it's pairs of electrons or number of electrons between atoms. Keep working hard. Go to the next set of questions and good luck.